I'm just trying to change the world here, people. Oh, really? The Facebooking and the tweeting and the Instagramming, all that would not exist without our understanding of science. So it's amazing that you took that as an insult. You mean true for you is different from true for anybody else? Have yeah, you come to absolutely, you? because I can't think either got to be true or not. I can't, no, no. Well, good evening, O'Reilly Radio listeners. Welcome back to show 164. This is your host, Andy Cowan, speaking. I am by myself this time around, but it is show 164, recorded Friday, September 8th, 2017, where we dismantle the current events for your edutainment through mostly rational conversations that make you go, oh, really? Uh, I am flying solo because I'm just going to make this as quick as possible. This is going to be an economic update and then just kind of an update on weather in the Atlantic and how it affects yours truly, because uh, I am a Florida resident. Therefore, this is uh, pertinent information to me. Okay, so first off, uh, I want to thank you Patreon supporters out there, Donald Davis, Melissa G., Henry, and Daniel Duncan of the Problem Addict Podcast. Thank you very much for continuing to support all of these endeavors. And uh, uh, let's see, so the Problem Addict Podcast, that did debut August 13th. I will go ahead and take that out of my notes because that date has passed. So there we go. And as you can see, I make mistakes. So please, if you find one, go ahead and pause what you're doing. Pause the podcast if you're listening after the fact. And, you know, write it down. Send us a note. O'Reilly Radio Podcast. O-R-L-Y-R-A-D-I-O-P-O-D-C-A-S-T at gmail.com. Or phone it in at 470-222-6759. That's, uh, that's a free voicemail and it still works. I hope. Okay. So... Global Economic Pulse. We were dark last week uh, so that I could actually get all the content up, and I have done that. So yay to me for living up to the expectations that I've set for myself. So that's all uh, all well and good. So we like to follow the money around here, so this is really the follow the money and economic pulse kind of uh, segment here. So we are currently in week two of September. That would be this one right here for those listening and watching in the video. Uh, so last week, uh, from the week previous, the Dow closed at 21987 and 56 cents. That was up over the last uh, last week. The NASDAQ closed at 6435.33. That was up also. And the S&P closed at 2476.55. That was also up. Not so good this week, though, because we're all down. Uh, the only one that really didn't fare well was the Dow. The Dow actually closed lower than the last week of August at 21,797.79. The NASDAQ closed at 6,360 uh, and 19 cents. Uh, that also was down. And S&P closed at 2,461.43, and that was also down. Not a whole lot, but... You know, it's it's measurable. It is definitely a measure, measurable percent. And, of course, we're leapfrogging over all the day traders and everybody, so we're just seeing how things were going um, at the top, top at the bottom of the week as it closes on Friday. So, you know, trash day. That's how it works. Um, looking at the... Well, actually, I should change things around here. So the barrel of oil price that is sitting... Let's see, because this is this is interesting because we now have a bunch of refineries that are closed in Texas, and now Florida is going to be interesting because you know we do have some major ports and fuel that comes in through those ports. So, looking at last week, the barrel of oil uh, per barrel of oil that's fifty-five gallons, I believe, or no, actually, a barrel of oil I think is run by fifty gallons. So, a fifty-gallon drum of oil is at trading at $47.29 last week and that was down a whole 58 cents from the week previously which was down from the week previous and the week previous to that and the week previous to that all of August it just kept dropping um, so now uh, as we're watching prices start to go up on speculation that is from the oil that's in the ground already so this is just what they're going to have to pay to then replace what's already in there. 
So we're looking at $47.48, which is up a whole 19 cents over last week. So we'll see how see how that carries on as more ports shut down and demand spikes and gouging happens and all that fun stuff. So we also like to look at the International Monetary Fund and their basket of currencies. So this is how the five most traded currencies in the foreign exchange market are referenced against the U.S. dollar. So looking at week two here in September, actually, no, we need to look at all of September because, again, we were dark last week. So continuing the trend, I'm leaving more and more of these in here in the show notes. Um, and the show notes are going to change, by the way, but just to... What you're looking at on the screen, if you're checking out the live stream out on Facebook or you're checking out the live stream out on Twitch, I, I finally man managed to get everything working. So uh, we'll see if that holds together. Hold together, baby. Hold together, rust Liam Falcon. It's okay. Okay. So week one of September, one U.S. dollar would get you 0.84 euro cents. I guess it's cents. Uh, it would get you 6.57 Chinese yuan, it would get you 109.85 Japanese yen, 77 sterlings, I guess, which would be the uh, against the British pound, and 0 0.00022 bitcoins. Now this week things have continued to slide, so we're we're seeing a basically like what would be a one cent slide in the euro. So now we're down to 0.83. In the Chinese yuan, it dropped another hmm, 13, 13 cents. So it's now at 6.48. And the Japanese yen, uh, I'm sorry, the Chinese yuan. Nope, I was right. Japanese yen has been staying relatively consistent at 109 and then just changing the last decimals. This week, they really, um, they really rectified, I believe, what the slippage was over time. So now they're at 107.84. Um, I think this might have something to do with the sheer panic and uh, the political unrest, you know, having an, a, near, a neighbor that does not like you that now has been toying with hydrogen bombs and then launching them over your little island. I think that's uh, probably has a lot to do with uh, the state of the currency in Japan right now. And the Great British Pound, it uh, it actually rose by, oh, no, I'm sorry, it did not. <laughs> I was looking at the wrong column. No, it slid also, so it's 0.76. But uh, the Bitcoin, Bitcoin rose by itty-bitty tiny little percentages. So it's now at 0 0.00023, up from 2.2. So we're still watching that. Uh, Bitcoin is not part of the foreign exchange market reference currencies. It's just it's a digital currency that is used all over the place. And that I'm a digital native is one of those things that I like to take a look at. So uh, if you don't think that we should be watching that or you're uninterested, uh, definitely then, you know, voice your opinion. Let me know. Okay. <clears throat> now, another segment uh, that we like to add in here is our friends over at usdebtclock.org have a running tally and it's it's pretty crazy here so taking a look uh september 3rd i wasn't able to get the the right one there but uh last week it was oh here we go i gotta t i gotta take deep breaths on this one deep, big deep breath 19 trillion 974 billion 87 million 991 thousand six hundred and fifteen Dollars, and that was up two billion two hundred ninety-five million three hundred ninety-three thousand five hundred and eighty-five dollars from the previous week. That's two trillion that it was up. Uh, again, kind of rectifying for some of the weird slippages that happened in the last two weeks of August. Um, you know, just with the consistency. So there might have been something with the algorithm there, and it's just catching up because now we're seeing an even higher number. So as of September eighteenth, about uh, eight. 45 about an hour ago I, I took these pulses here and it's at 19 trillion nine hundred and seventy seven billion six hundred seventy eight million seven hundred and eighty three thousand seven hundred and eighty four dollars which is up three billion five hundred ninety million seven hundred and ninety two thousand one hundred and sixty nine dollars from last week 
So that's the highest spike that uh, that it's gone up in a single week since that uh, since I've been watching by almost a billion dollars. So that's that's pretty considerable. And of course, I'm taking these snapshots and I'm I'm dropping them on the website so you can see you know all the other little things that are going on whether it be the US population, imported oil and OPEC prices, uh armed forces, retirement, dollar supply added in 2017, national debt, of course US federal deficit gap and all that. So all of that is there it's a it's a wealth of information and I encourage you to continue to take a look at it. And that is going to wrap for the money segment. And uh, then I'm going to get into, well, I don't think it'll really matter. I can just go ahead and, and roll on into it. Uh, I'm not going to do any special things. Well, actually, you know what? This is sciency. So let's do this. Okay, this. Really? You're, you're not going to let me, like, play my... My thing? How rude. Come on. If you wish hey. to make there we go. an apple pie from scratch, <laughs> you must first invent the universe. If you're scientifically literate, the world looks very different to you. It's not just a lot of mysterious things happening. There's a lot we understand out there. And that understanding empowers you. If you base medicine on science, you kill people. If you base the design of planes on science, they fly. If you base the design of rockets on science, they reach the moon. It works, bitches. Boom! That's right. Science works, and we're taking a look at some science right here. So, uh, a wonderful web website that has uh, come to my attention during uh, Harvey and now Irma. And, of course, we've got Jose and Katya down, down in the uh, Gulf there. Uh, is SpaghettiModels.com. It's called Mike's Weather Page. He has an app, he has a Facebook page, and a Twitter presence that he is he's also doing live streams, and he's very knowledgeable. Obviously, he is a hobbyist, So, but uh, like many hobbyists, you take it to that next level, you take it to the extreme. That's very much what he's done here. He's aggregated all the really interesting stuff around. Uh, he is a Florida native. I think I caught wind that he's like in West Palm Beach, somewhere there. So he's obviously invested in this, uh, similar to myself. So he's pulled things from the National Hurricane Center. Uh, he's pulled models from uh, the Euro and the GFS. Uh, those are two agencies with, you know, pretty, um, the, the real basic tracking records. GFS is what NOAA typically works with uh, and the National Hurricane Center. Those are the models that they go with. Uh, but the Euro models have seemed to be more accurate over time, so we may see a shift in methodology over the over time. Um, not sure what, not sure how that's going, but it's just a trend that I've noticed. So whether anything comes of it, eh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So Irma's the big bad boy right now, or bad girl, or well, it's a hurricane. I don't think gendering a hurricane is probably the right thing to do. So. Anywho, so at 8 p.m. on Friday, September 9th, uh, 8th, der, September 8th, it's, uh, the, 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 the current location is 22.2 north and 77.2 west. Those are the latitude, longitude information, uh, intermediate advisory 39A. So it's sitting south of the Bahamas by couple hundred miles and the track is now bringing it right up through I see initial wind field no we want that one on first okay so I've got this uh, this actually out on the page as well so you can see that's what we're gonna deal with here uh, let's see can you see my mouse you probably can um, but you see that little bump out there on the on the side of Florida that is Kennedy Space Center, Cape Canaveral Air Force Base, uh, Cocoa Beach, Cape, Cape Canaveral. That's basically where I live. You know, I'm not going to give you real specifics on that. You know, those of you that are watching, you probably already know exactly where I live. Many of you have already been over the house. So that's just a thing. But we were kind of concerned because a lot of the models 
had it running through my living room. Um, but it doesn't matter. The storm is large enough. The storm actually covers uh, a larger surface area than the state of Florida contains. So it's going to basically plop on top of Florida and just drain drain itself onto us and, of course, whip up anything that it can, whether they be water spouts, tornadoes, uh, floods, lots of flooding. Uh, Governor Rick Scott did declare a state of emergency when it was not even hitting Puerto Rico yet. Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic have seen tremendous damage and loss of life already. Uh, I do not have the specific numbers on that, but you can find it. It's going to be out there. This is a hurricane that's going to be for the record books because of uh, it reached record uh, strengths while still in the Atlantic. Uh, it's it's a sizable storm. It's larger than Andrew. It was a Category 5 for a while. It's currently down to a Category 4. And I believe it may diminish down to a Category 3 as it comes through the Strait, uh, the Strait of Florida between Cuba and, and uh, the Keys. And then make landfall probably as a strong three. And then it looks like it's, it's just slowing down. The, it's predicted to really, really super slow down right now. And that's bad. Uh, it does indicate that it's getting weaker. But it is going to then have the time that it needs to rain on us. And also more prolonged winds. And it's a big storm. So those prolonged winds are going to be all over the state of Florida. Uh, there is no escaping this. You would have to have driven out of state. And all of those roads happen to lead directly on the chase path that the storm is uh, predicted to take. In fact, it looks like it's taking I-75. It's just going to get on the, on the turnpike there. It's going to take I-75 straight up to Georgia. And then it's going to cut over through Georgia to Tennessee. And that's when... It's going to be a tropical storm by the time it, it hits the Florida-Georgia border. And then it's going to be just a tropical depression and rain and rain and rain and rain through Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee, Mississippi, South Carolina, North Carolina, and Kentucky. It's just going to hit all of you. This is not going to leave any stone unturned. It's going to rain. It's going to be bad. Um, especially given that we just had Harvey come through, and it just rained over the entire area as well. I mean, there's, there's certain feeder bands that I was getting today that were from Harvey. Yeah, that's just, you know, the leftovers, the leftover bits. So there's a lot to be concerned with there. Um, there are a couple of depressions still out there, uh, and it looks, it's remarkably even-paced. Uh, there's one storm in the Gulf. Then there's a storm uh, right on top of Cuba right now. That would be uh, Irma. And then there's Jose out in the middle, and he's going to supposed to take a, take a northern turn and track up to Bermuda. And then there's a couple depressions that are, again, evenly spaced out, where new storms, probably tropical storms, and then into low-level hurricanes, thinking low-level at this point, because we're starting to march through the season. But September is like peak hurricane season, so that's where we're at. Uh, so those storms are just going to continue to to build out there. So we're not out of the woods uh, by a long shot. They, they're going to continue to come over. Now, whether or not they hit this, that's that's another question entirely. They they could run low and south of Cuba and then right, right back up into the Galveston area. Uh, they could... Pull a Katrina. They they can do whatever they really want. Uh, so keep an eye on the models and see what see what comes of them. Uh, this is not a time that we can ignore them. And of course, they're going to say all sorts of things about you know it's not a time to worry about you know climate change and all that. Well, they, they just don't want to talk about it. And I can understand some of that, but. The weather is getting more conducive to create stronger storms. The models are reflecting that. What we're seeing is reflecting that. It was the earlier years that had the big marching storms. They were anomalies for then. 
this is, I'm afraid, is going to become a new normal. But, you know, I would love to be wrong. I really would love to be wrong. But I don't have any proof that I am. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. But I'm perfectly willing to be wrong on this. I would love to be wrong. Because hurricanes are a pain in the ass. And, of course, deadly. So can't, can't ignore that. Uh, looking at the Hurricane Irma map, there's uh, hurricane warnings from Jupiter, Florida, south. Uh, tropical storm warnings are more northerly, and that's where, where I'm sitting up there. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's all across the state. There's no place to hide. Um, yeah, even if you left the state, you're still going to be having some, uh, some trouble out there. Let me close out some of these. Uh, oh, this was an interesting map that I found, um, also from SpaghettiModels.com. Uh, Hurricane Irma power outage prediction. Uh, let me just hit a refresh on that and see if anything, any changes have been made. And no. So the Ohio State University, it's actually not just Ohio State University, it's the Ohio State University. I find that amusing. Texas A&M A University and the University of Michigan have collaborated on a power outage prediction model and at present people all the way up into looks like a couple counties in nashville but all the way through georgia and almost all of florida of course there's some of the panhandle there that is more alabama than florida um yeah it's looking right now that they're approximating two million six hundred and sixty thousand affected customers are are going to suffer power outages during this storm. So this is a prediction. We'll see how it actually pans out. Um, I would be very interested to see if their map, if their prediction algorithms work. Um, fortunately, people right along the coast, I mean, I'm, I'm going to have to deal with maybe some storm surge, but I don't think so. I'm, I'm at, a, at a paltry five feet above sea level. Uh, but my, ge my geography is more complicated than what my elevation is. So I'll leave it at that. It looks like I'm in the 10 to 20% range of losing power. I've got a generator. I've got backup fuel. Um, I lost power during Matthew, and Matthew skirted the state along, along the coast. It did not go straight through. Um, going straight through does have the benefit of taking the wind out of the sails. Um, it weakens it tremendously, weakens the entire storm system, because... Believe it or not, some of Florida is actually fairly tall. It's just right in the middle, and it happens so gradually you don't even notice it. But that that does affect a system that is 500 miles wide. So we have that going for us, and that's nice. Um, let's see. Tr Tropical Tidbits is another one that, uh, that he has referenced. Um, and they had a lot of the spaghetti models, and they do a lot of good commentary on trying to parse out uh, little bits and pieces about what's what and what's where. Uh, oh, here's another another lovely map. Uh, this is a morphed composite of water droppage. So this is a percent of of actual rain precipitation. So as as you can see here, we've got uh, Katya there in the there in the Gulf, just spinning along, building up. You can see as it darkens and gets more more defined over this 72-hour uh, composite. Um, Irma there, just looking looking fine, just ru just rampaging on a pretty uh, straight line trajectory. Could Irma decide to not go straight through? Um, I mean to not take that turn and go go north into Florida. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Um, Yankees and fools are the ones that predict predict weather in Florida, as they say. So we'll see how that really works out. But Jose is right behind her, over here. Again, I'm gendering them because those are the names. But you know, I'm sorry if that offends anybody's sensibilities. And then you've got out there again, evenly paced. There's the the formation of possibly storm number number four in the Atlantic right now, and then possibly storm number five right off the coast of Africa. Uh, 
just looking at these long trends, it's it's really it's amazing to try and figure them all out. Uh, and they're really beautiful. They're, they're almost like watching a lava lamp once they get going. Okay, so let's see if there's anything else that uh, that would be interesting. Oh, here's a, there's a nice map that I can bring up there. Okay, so that's the that's the radar. As you can see, here's Florida in all of its uh, penile glory. Uh, <laughs> and then there's Irma. Irma is a nice big fat storm right there. Definitely stretching the entire what would if we superimposed, definitely over the entire length. Um, wider than Andrew was, but by the time re making landfall, Andrew was a Category 4. That's how it's marked down in the books. Um, but it only barely made it to a 4 by the time that, that happened. Um, so that may be the same case here, but much much wider spread. So the chance of gusting is, uh, well, it's the damage path is going to be more spread out. So it's not just going to be, oh, Homestead got hit. No, it's going to be much worse than that. Uh, something else that's interesting about Irma is that it actually had a double hurricane wall, a double eye wall. Um, so like another 50 miles out from, from the center wall, there was another ring of intense wind and, uh, and rain. So if the eye is going to pass over you, and the eye is larger than Lake Okeechobee right now, so... If that does happen to pass over you, if you happen to be on I-75, I, I really hope that nobody's on I-75 by the time she comes through. Uh, it, you're going to get two lulls in the storm, and then you're going to get slapped around really hard because that's the way the eye works. You know, it's calm in the eye, and then you hit that eye wall again, and that's the most intense part of the storm. So the calm before the storm is right in the middle of the storm. It's weird that way. Let's see if there's anything else. Uh, here's, uh, here's some of the spaghetti models. Uh, and they are all tracking right now right up I-75, basically. Yeah. So we've got a plethora of models, over 20. Yeah, 25 models. No. I'm sorry. Less than that. 12, 16, 20, 20 models. Yeah, that's right. I'm getting tired. <laughs> so I'm going to be uh, be hitting the hay after this one. So, yeah, there's there's 20 miles uh, composited through this, uh, this image here. And there's a couple outliers. You know, we'd love to see see it take that, that one wild hair out there. Well, actually, there's two wild hairs. There's one, and that's the one that my dad was thinking that's going to do, and just go straight through Cuba and just keep on going. Uh, it's a very simplistic model, probably not taking a lot of other things into account, like all the other ones are. Um, it's it's interesting, and it gets really squirrely once it gets up into up into the past five day range. So don't trust that. But the three day cone is usually quite reliable. And that's going to take it right up, uh, right up through Florida. So not a whole lot else to say about that. Um, oh, here's a nice animated one. Uh, yeah, weather service. Okay. Oh, that's that's a scary looking storm. It really is. And it's making landfall. The eye is making landfall in Cuba right now. Based on this. At yeah, one thirty GMT. Ooh. Okay, so there's that, and that's no fun. Uh, let's see. Anything else that I can show you that I should show you that you would be more inclined to be interested in? Got the precipitate. Precipitate. Per, yeah. I can talk. Not really. Not really kind of done with that. Oh, uh, the Beaufort scale. This is an interesting interesting scale here. Beaufort number. What is the Beaufort number? Siemens term. Okay. So this is this is just one of those ready for jeopardy kind of things. The Beaufort scale uh, it goes from 0 to 12 and it's wind speed. So this is the 
subtropical storm because it ends right at 73 miles per hour or higher, so that's when it gets into hurricane force. Um, so under uh, with a zero under wind speed is under one. The Siemens term is that it is calm. Uh, smoke rises vertically, you know, as for effects on land. Uh, so th this is a neat little scale, again, found on, on SpaghettiModels.com. And it, it's just gives, giving you an indication of what that wind would look like. Uh, so as the Beaufort number goes up to 1, it's 1 to 3 miles per hour, 2, 4 to 7. Uh, so light air, gentle breeze... Uh, no, light air, light breeze, gentle breeze, moderate breeze, fresh breeze. Ooh, a fresh breeze. Then a strong breeze. A moderate gale is 32 to 38 miles per hour and a Beaufort number of 7. And that's when whole trees are in motion and resistance is felt in walking against the wind. It's always a fun thing to kind of lean into the wind and walk as long as trees don't come flying at you. Then there's a fresh gale. I love fresh being being one of the adjectives here. And that's uh, 39 to 46 miles per hour, and that's twigs and small branches are broken off trees. Then up to a strong gale. Uh, slight structural damage occurs, slate blown over from roofs. That's uh, 47 to 54 miles per hour. Then a whole gale, not, not a partial gale, a whole gale is 55 to 63 miles per hour at a Beaufort number of 10. Seldom experienced on land, trees broken, structural damage occurs. Well, yeah, seldom, I suppose. So, obviously, at, at sea, it's, it's all sorts of bad. Then at 11, it's 64 to 72 miles per hour, and that's just straight up a storm. And very rarely experienced on land, usually with widespread damage. Yeah, hurricanes. That's, that's what we're going to go through. Um, I just have a picture of a house breaking in half. That's lovely. That's nice. Yeah. And uh, at a Beaufort number of 12, it's 73 or higher, and that's hurricane force winds, and I think we know what's going on there. And the description of, of it is just violence and destruction. Oh, I can... Can I scroll that down anymore? No, I cannot. I can do... Because you guys aren't seeing that. There you go. Now you can see it. Just had to do full screen. So that's fun. And now I can't get back. There we go. No, I don't want... No, stop that. Stop that browser. Stop being weird. Okay. Okay, well, I think that that's... Uh, oh, okay, so that was the Beaufort scale, and then there's the Saffir-Simpson hurricane scale, and that's, you know, when we end up with the TD, the TS, and then the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 as categories. Um, doesn't look like it really wants to show that to you very much. I have an incoming message. I should have muted my phone before this. Um, so a Category 5 is greater than 157 miles per hour sustained winds. Um, if Irma comes on shore she'll, as a Category 4, it would be 130 to 156 mile per hour winds. Um, there's also... So basically the new one is just a wind speed indicator. Uh, the old Sapphire Simpson scale had uh, millibars. That's the, the air pressure. Um, as the storm gets worse, the air pressure goes down. And so far, yeah, that was the record that Irma passed, was the lowest recorded pressure of any storm at sea. Um, which was, that's, that's kind of a staggering thing. So, yeah. And that would be, like, Category 5 would be under under 920 millibars, 920 millibars. Also, typically those have a storm surge uh, in excess of 18 feet. You know, that's also in counting high tide and things like that. So, um, yeah, it's going to be fun. I'm, I'm thinking that by the time that, uh, that it really reaches me, it's, I'm going to be dealing with Category 2, Category 1 wins, which is what I dealt with with um, Matthew the last time. I don't seem to think that there's any, I don't think there's going to be any problems here, uh, but there is definitely going to be widespread damage across the state. So keep us in your thoughts. Uh, do the thing that you do, whatever it is that you do. Do that voodoo that you do so well. And we're all just going to hunker down and, uh, and weather the storm. So that's my weekend. 
And if you need to reach out uh, out to me, then, well, those of you that would need to reach out to me can. I did get uh, get a message from Tucker Drake, of um, who has been a guest on the show before, and also a message from Daniel Duncan. And I thank both of you for reaching out and and expressing your concern. Um, I'm very sorry that this apparently the storm is just going to just passing through and is then going to rain on on both of your parades. Uh, so hopefully that doesn't hurt anybody else uh, as bad as it could. So we'll see how all of that goes. But well, ladies and gentlemen, I think that that is uh, that's all that I can really uh, really tell you today. So let's see if I can pull up the the end credits. Here we go, and uh, the end. There we go. Okay, so if you've enjoyed what we've done here, what I've done here today, and you'd like to help us out, there's a few ways. Uh, you can donate to the show through www.patreon.com slash overlyradio and get access to show content that does not show up in the RSS feed typically. Uh, also, make the algorithm work for us. Review us on iTunes, uh, Stitcher, Spreaker, wherever you can leave a, a star rating or review, that would certainly help get us in front of other people. And also, it would uh, let me know that uh, we're doing a good job or a bad job. Um, but, you know, you could always engage me directly and you could send us a message on Overly Radio Podcast at gmail.com or you could phone it in or text it in at 470 222 6759. That should always be ready to take your call or your text. And if you don't like what we've done here this evening, you can contact the National Suicide Prevention Hotline at 1-800-273-8255. Available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. The Lifeline provides free and confidential support for people in distress, prevention and crisis resources for you or your loved ones, and best practices for professionals. Thank you for choosing to waste your valuable time on me. This has been a really radio part of the Random Acts Company. This work licensed under Creative Commons Attribute 3.0 United States license, including the music Rocket and Pemgea, created by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com. And I would like to uh, to give a, a specific shout out to Mike over at SpaghettiModels.com for providing really a, just a rich resource. And it's... It's really helping out and giving us more information so that we can make advised decisions. Certainly, all of these things have to be taken with a grain of salt and worked into your life the way they need to be. So take that for however you need to take it <sighs> and follow the page. I'll let you know how I weather the storm. Go, uh, go like us on Facebook. Yeah, that would help. Go do that. All right. I'm going to batten down the hatches. See you later.